The start of the series shows Jade, a gifted barista and struggling single mother waking up in the morning. She goes downstairs to the kitchen to find her seven-year-old son Zion eating breakfast which he made for himself. He then reminds his mother that they have to pay his school fees. He then asks her if they're poor. Jade shakes her head and says that they're not poor. This is when Zion suggests maybe he should go to a cheaper school. Jade tells him that it's her job to decide on those matters and ushers him to get ready for school. It is revealed that Zion suffers from a rare bone disease that affects his mobility. After dropping him off at school, Jade goes to work at a local neighborhood cafe. The owner of the cafe, Mrs. Changely, is a friendly woman in her 50s and she seems to be really close with Jade. Mrs. Changely complains about their cafe not earning as they expected and blames the new restaurants around town that are supposedly stealing their customers. In response, Jade tells her not to worry and suggests a little revamp of the cafe would make it more attractive. Next, we are introduced to our hero, Eros Petrakis, an attractive yet pompous son of a shipping tycoon. Eros gets a call from his father, asking him if he can make it to the meeting on time. Eros says that he'll be there in five minutes, but his father knows that he's just lying. It's revealed that Eros is struggling to win his father's trust in a desperate bid to secure his place as a suitable heir to the company. After his boxing session, Eros and his senior secretary, Donovan, head over to the cafe, the same one where Jade works. This is when our heroine has a chance to meet with our hero when she accidentally collides with him. The two don't have a very good start though. Eros nonchalantly asks her to keep her eyes straight. He looks like he's already irritated as his father didn't allow him to attend the meeting. Eros's comment obviously intimidates Jade, but she tries her best to welcome her customers. She then prepares one of her special coffee blends and Eros and Donovan are impressed by her barista skills. As a result, Eros seems to be back in a good mood and he tells Donovan that they should get to the meeting. Soon after, Eros joins his father in the important meeting and suggests a solution to the current problem. It's revealed that their company is facing a conflict between the workers at the seaport, so Eros proposes that he will talk with the workers face to face and listen to their grievances. As always, his father is doubtful and wants to run the business alone, as he doesn't think Eros makes a suitable heir. This is particularly because, according to him, Eros is a womanizer and seldom serious about the business. Regardless of his father's reservations, Eros manages to convince the board members that the conflict will soon be resolved. So, the meeting ends smoothly in his favor. As a result, Eros makes one of his hasty decisions to hire the barista, Jade, as his personal assistant. It was her that put him in a confident place, and he also finds her oddly familiar. Under the orders of his boss, Donovan visits the cafe again, offering Jade the job of personal assistant at Eros's company, that is, Petrakis Shipping Company. Understandably, Jade takes it as a joke, as no one would hire a random stranger. Donovan then hands her a card and tells her to think about it. However, our girl is in a hurry as she just got a call from her son's school. When she arrives at the school, she learns that her son's condition is getting worse. This means that he needs more expensive treatment and medication. Faced with financial devastation, Jade decides to take the job at Petraka's shipping company, which would triple her current salary. The first day on her job, she learns that Eros is super rich. During her break, she goes back to her old workplace to talk about her day with Mrs. Changley. The two women then make a pact to revamp the cafe, but since Jade now has another job, she will be partner in the business. In order to expand their business, they will have to explain their business plan to the bank, so they schedule a meeting with one of the bank's staff for the next day. Next, Jade returns to her new workplace where she is assigned by her boss Eros to get the boardroom, that is the meeting room, ready, as they have an important meeting with a Japanese CEO named Mr. Takashi at 3 p.m. While Eros goes to practice his usual boxing session, Jade prepares the boardroom for the important meeting. Suddenly, the Japanese CEO arrives and Jade greets him warmly. She asks him if he's early, but Mr. Takashi tells her that he is on time, since the meeting is at 2 p.m. Now, this is a problem for both Jade and Eros, as he is still at his boxing session. It turns out that he miscommunicated the timing to her. Once Jade notifies him, Eros hurries to get ready to welcome Mr. Takashi, but the Japanese CEO is very strict with time, so he lashes out at Eros for disrespecting him. Mr. Takashi then takes off before Eros can properly apologize to him. Consequently, Eros has to listen to an earful from his father. In return, he lashes out his anger at Jade, who doesn't seem to understand why Eros is yelling at her when he was the one who miscommunicated the timing in the first place. Later that night, Eros asks Jade to come over to his penthouse. When she arrives there, he is already drunk. He then starts wallowing in self-pity before falling asleep on the sofa. After this, Jade returns home to find her sister Saf in the kitchen. Our heroine then talks about her day with her sister, complaining about how her new boss is such a douchebag. 
The next day, Jade manages to win over Mr. Takashi's heart by gifting him with Sumiyaki coffee, which is specially hand-picked from the Serrata Shimada plantation in Brazil and made by Japanese descendants. Mr. Takashi is impressed by how thoughtful Jade can be, so he agrees to do business with the Petrakuses. While they are in a meeting, Jade misses her meeting with the bank staff and Mrs. Changely. Although Jade managed to save the business from losing a potential investor, she planned the gift without first consulting Eros. Eros's father is quick to notice that Jade is the smart assistant who saved his son's reputation. He then belittles Eros for this, telling him that he may have fooled Mr. Takashi, but he can't fool him. As usual, our hero gets angry at Jade for apparently pulling a stunt without informing him. After work, Jade visits Eros's penthouse and tells him that she can't understand why he's angry with her when she was the one who saved his ass. When asked why she didn't inform him about the gift earlier, Jade tells him that it all happened so fast. When she realized that Mr. Takashi was going back to Tokyo that night, she had to get him to sign the business deal. Eros then yells at her, saying that she made him look like a fool in front of his father. Jade finally lashes out and tells him to do his damn job himself instead of taking it out on her. She points out that this is also the reason why his father doesn't respect him. Eros then stops her, shouting that she is fired from the job. The next morning, however, Jade formally apologizes to Eros at the office. She tells him that she may have acted out of line, but he brings out the worst in her, and that he can't fire her because she is quitting the job. Saying this, she storms out of the office. Just then, she gets a call from Saf, who informs her that Zion fell and is being taken to the clinic. Jade learns that her son's condition is getting worse day by day. His bones are deteriorating at a faster rate, so he's going to need specialized care. Our struggling heroine is determined that she will manage to conquer her finances in order to provide her child with the best health care. Later, she meets with Mrs. Changley with a business plan and asks her if she can come back to work. The kind woman says that Jade is welcome any time. The two then decide to pursue their plans for improving the cafe. In the meantime, Eros' father, Patrika Sr., crashes his boxing session in order to inform him the board has called another meeting. They want to know the next in line, that is, the heir to the company. Patrika Sr. then reveals that he's going to choose his daughter, Chloe, as she has lived up to his expectations. She owns three shipyards in Europe and has continued the lineage as she is soon getting married. Hearing this, Eros abruptly says that he's getting married too. Now he has to find a girl to get married too. After thinking for a while, an idea strikes him. In the meantime, Jade sadly learns that Mrs. Changely has recently been diagnosed with cancer. This is the reason why she asked Jade to partner with her in the cafe, as she doesn't have much time left. That evening, as Jade prepares to leave work, Eros visits her in the cafe. She is confused as to why he is tailing her after all that happened between them. Eros initially apologizes for acting out and not thanking her enough for saving the deal with Mr. Takashi. He then offers to invest in the cafe. However, our girl is smart enough to realize that he just wants a favor from her. Out of the blue, Eros proposes a marriage agreement explaining that he just wants to gain his father's trust by making him believe that he is doing as well in life as his sister. Hearing all this, Jade is taken aback and she rejects his offer for the time being. However, when she learns that Mrs. Shankly's cafe has been sold off by her cruel children and they have to vacate within a week, she decides to accept Eros' offer to gain the financial advantage. In the meantime, Eros cannot stop thinking about Jade as he is sure that they had met each other before bumping into each other at the cafe. He just can't seem to figure out when and where. That evening, Jade visits Eros' place and accepts his offer to be his fake fiancé with some non-negotiable terms. Not only does he have to invest in the cafe, but he also has to buy a place so that Jade and Mrs. Changely can continue doing business. And since Jade will be spending some time with him during this engagement period, she will be away from her responsibilities at the cafe, so she demands compensation, just like a job. Eros gladly accepts her terms. The next day, our heroine gets a complete makeover because according to Eros, his fiancée should look classy and elegant. Clad in the cutest yellow dress, Jade looks absolutely stunning. When asked about why he chose her, Eros says that she is the only woman who can make him look like an honest man. Later, while doing their fake proposal thing, a guy interrupts them to inform Eros about something. He turns out to be none other than Joseph, Jade's ex. Eros, who is oblivious about their relationship, introduces Joseph to Jade, informing her that he has recently joined the company. Next, Eros announces his big engagement to his parents during a lunch gathering. Although his mother is happy with the decision, his father doesn't seem to believe the facade. Patrika Sr. is also adamant about making Chloe the heir to the business. The following morning, Joseph makes an unannounced visit to Jade. 
He tells her that he's sorry about yesterday when he didn't acknowledge her, explaining that he himself was in shock. In a flashback to eight years ago, it's revealed that the then 28-year-old Joseph had left Jade, who was only 19 at the time, to go to the US. As they catch up on life, Zion suddenly interrupts them to hug his mom. Joseph is shocked because he didn't know Jade had a son. Later, when she is bidding him goodbye, a mysterious guy secretly takes their pictures. Next, Jade goes to the cafe where Eros is already waiting for her. She then makes her signature blend for him, and while doing so, she lectures him on coffee. As they fake their relationship, Jade and Eros start spending more time together, and without realizing it, they have started to like each other. In the meantime, Eros keeps getting a flashback from the day when he met a girl exactly like Jade at a masquerade ball. As he gets closer to her, he continues to believe that the girl he met that day at the party and Jade are the same person. The next day at work, Eros' mom visits him and gives him a family ring. She then tells him that if he is sure of Jade, then he can give the ring to her. Additionally, she also hands him a file that contains recent pictures of Jade, Zion, and Joseph. It turns out that Eros' father had one of his men follow Jade and delve into her personal life. Eros is shocked to see the pictures, as Jade had said that there was nothing going on between her and Joseph. He also didn't know that she had a son. Now he questions if he really knows her. In the next scene, he gives Jade a contract of engagement for her to sign in case she decides to take advantage of him. Jade notices his unusual behavior as he seemed to be very friendly and loving the other day. When asked why he is acting so weird, Eros coldly says that this is how they do business deals and that she shouldn't expect anything more. Jade feels hurt when she hears this from him, so she stomps out of his office sobbing. Joseph notices her and runs after her. He then reads the contract paper and learns about their fake engagement. Jade continues sobbing and Joseph hugs her to comfort her. Sadly, Eros arrives at the same time and sees them together. He misunderstands the situation and grabs the contract paper from Joseph and tears it apart. He then yells at Jade, telling her that it's all over. That evening, Jade visits Eros's place and lashes out at him. Eros, on the other hand, tells her that she lied to him about her existing family. Jade replies that Joseph is in her past, so she wasn't ready to talk about him. Eros continues to ask if Zion is Joseph's son, and Jade refuses to answer. Even with the heated argument, Eros calms her down and slowly approaches her. The two then kiss each other and eventually end up taking that passion to the bed. During this time, we are shown flashbacks of Eros where he had been intimate with the mysterious girl at a party. In the next scene, we are finally taken back to that fateful night when Jade and Eros met for the first time at a masquerade ball. It is revealed that the same day, Joseph had left for the US, so Saf, her sister, had taken Jade to a club so that she would stop whining about her act. The two sisters disguise themselves in wigs and masks and enter the party. This is when Eros, who is also wearing a mask, bumps into her. They chat for a while and start flirting with each other. Jade, realizing that she direly needs a distraction, asks Eros to kiss her, and they eventually end up having a one-night fling. Back to the present, Jade and Eros, while still in bed, both finally realize that their first meeting was on that fateful night. Our hero tells Jade that he has been trying to find her ever since that night. However, Jade comes back to her senses and tells him that all of this was a mistake. She then dresses and leaves his apartment. The next day, Joseph once again makes an unannounced visit to Jade. He apologizes to her for not being there all these years, and now that he is back, he is not going to let her go without a fight. In the meantime, Eros texts Jade that they need to talk about the other night. When they meet, he asks her why she freaked out yesterday. Jade says that she was in shock when she realized that he was the one she had met years ago at the masquerade ball. She finally reveals the truth about her son Zion and that Eros is his father. Eros says he's in surprise and he suspected it considering the time they met, which is eight years ago. He takes the revelation positively and says that they can be a happy family and that he is sorry that she had to go through so much alone. However, Jade tells him that she doesn't want to reveal the truth about Zion. She doesn't want to risk making his life any harder than it already is. She then suggests that they should go their separate ways before walking away from him. The next day, Eros visits her apartment to meet Zion. He introduces himself as Jade's friend and gives him a toy ship. They have a little chat before exchanging a warm hug. Eros then bids his son goodbye and lets him know that they will meet again soon. In the next scene, our hero manages to impress a new investor. The investor invites him to dinner with other stakeholders and tells him to bring the soon-to-be Mrs. Petrakis, that is Jade, as well. Later, Eros's father informs him that Chloe will be arriving in town next week. When she arrives, he is going to make an official announcement that she will be the new CEO of the company. Eros objects and tells his father that he can do whatever he wants to and that he is tired of having to prove his worth to him. That evening, Jade visits him and hands him back the toy ship he gave to Zion. 
She tells him not to interfere with her and Zion's life. Arrow says that he can have custody of his child if he wants to, but he won't do so. He just wants her to do a small favor. She has to come to a dinner party with him. Cut to the next scene, the two enter a fun dinner party filled with his company's board members. They pretend and convince everyone that they are really in love. During this time, Eros tells Jade that he loves her. Jade is taken aback and leaves, believing that he is just saying that to make the facade look real. According to her, he only cares about the business and securing his spot as CEO by making it look like he is a good family guy. When she returns home, Joseph visits her and continues saying that he still loves her and wants things as they were before. However, after all these years, Jade realized that she didn't really love him, she was just dependent on him. She then suggests that they keep a distance. Afterward, Joseph goes to talk about Jade with Eros, who in a fit of rage, reveals that Zion is actually his son. The scene abruptly cuts to the Patrakis building, where Joseph gives his resignation to Eros' father, Patrakis Sr explaining that he cannot work under Eros anymore. Before leaving though, he reveals that Jade's son is his grandson, that is, Eros is the father of Zion. In the meantime, Jade wakes up in the middle of the night with 19 missed calls. She goes to the door and finds Eros there, who sadly informs her that Mrs. Changely had lost her battle with cancer. Heartbroken, Jade rushes to the cafe with Eros, but there is no one there. Eros tells her that he had taken care of everything when Mrs. Changely suddenly fell on the ground. The staff tried to call Jade, but since she didn't answer her calls, they called Eros to inform him about the woman's passing. He then takes her home, and this is where Joseph arrives at the door after hearing of the tragic news. Since the three are now face to face, Eros wants Jade to choose either him or Joseph. The scene abruptly cuts to Eros looking sadly out of his car window, revealing that she chose Joseph over him. Donovan then makes him realize that the reason Jade didn't choose him was not because she didn't love him, it's because she thinks he is doing everything out of guilt. He then tells Eros that if he really loves her, he should go after her right now. Filled with hope, Eros goes back to Jade's apartment only to find Joseph there. The latter continues to beg for a last chance to prove that he really loves her. He then leans in to kiss her, but Jade doesn't feel the same anymore. She tries to push him away, but he isn't taking no for an answer. When Eros sees this, he bursts into the apartment and starts punching Joseph, telling him to leave Jade alone. While the two brawl, Zion wakes up and sees the commotion. Jade runs to her son to cover his eyes, screaming at both of them to get out of her apartment. The next day, Eros' father confronts him about Jade and their son. He accuses Jade of manipulating Eros to get their money. He isn't going to let his family's name get dragged through the mud just because his son is such a naive fool to fall for a common girl. Petraeus Sr. then says it's either Jade or a seat at the table, meaning the post of CEO for Eros. Suddenly, police officers arrive at the scene to arrest Eros for physical assault. It turns out that Joseph reported him to the police regarding the brawl that they had the other day. Eros manages to clear his name afterward. Next, his father visits Jade at her cafe. Patrika Sr. wants to know Jade's intention, assuming that she wants their wealth. Jade doesn't tolerate this disrespect and says that she wants nothing from him. Patrika Sr. then tells her that he wants something from her, his grandchild. That is, Zion's full custody. He will pay his expensive medical bills and give him the best life, in exchange for not going public about Eros having a son. Having enough of his bullshit, Jade tells him to get out of her cafe. When Eros learns of this, he decides to get back at his father. In the next board meeting, he announces that he has a child with Jade, exposing that his father made him choose either the mother of his child or the company. He continues by saying that he is leaving the company for good. In the meantime, Jade cannot find Zion at home. She looks around the whole city, sobbing and shouting her child's name. She then calls Eros and informs him about their missing child. Thankfully, Zion is spotted outside the Patrakis building. Eros invites him inside and chats with the boy. Zion then tells him that he googled Eros Patrakis to get there. He casually asks if Eros is his daddy. If he is, Zion asks that he pay his expensive medical bills because he doesn't want his mom to cry every night over the expenses. Eros holds back his tears as he has no words for the boy. Next, Jade is finally reunited with her son. Eros then talks about the medical bills and offers to help her, but Jade says that she decided long ago to take care of her son on her own because he is her responsibility. Filled with guilt and determination to help Jade, Eros goes back to his father, pleading to get his job back. He has realized that since Zion's rare disease will be lifelong, he cannot put the financial burden on her, especially now that he knows Zion is his son. Therefore, he will help Jade out indirectly with the financials. For this, he needs his job back at the company. Petrakis Sr. agrees to make Eros the COO of the company, but on three conditions. 
One, he has to support his sister Chloe, who will be named CEO. Second, he has to fulfill all the responsibilities. And third, he has to marry the daughter of another shipping tycoon. Feeling he has no choice, Eros accepts his father's terms. But he too asks his father to refrain from seeing Jade and their son. The following day, Donovan brings a new contract for Jade, which mentions that Eros will continue investing in the cafe, and there is also a generous amount of stipend every month for her. A heads up for her exceptional taste in coffee. Jade knows there's a catch, so she asks Donovan about it. He hesitantly reveals that Eros is getting married. Jade is left in shock, realizing her love for him. She sits in the cafe alone, thinking back on all the time they spent together. In the meantime, Eros gets ready for his big day, where they announce his arranged engagement. While getting ready, his mom tells him to cheer up a little and that it was his decision to get married. When Eros complains that he didn't really have a choice, she suggests that he do what's best for his son, Zion, just like she and his father do what's best for him. Hearing this, our hero has a final realization before his big day. The scene then abruptly changes. We directly see Eros visiting Jade at her cafe, where he reveals to her that he didn't marry the girl of his father's choice. He makes sure that she understands how much he wants to be there for her and their son, even if it means giving up his family's legacy. Jade is moved by his words and finally tells him that she loves him. In the next scene, our loving couple decides to marry at a low-key ceremony in the cafe. Zion is the flower boy at his parents' wedding, and Joseph, who has now come to terms with Jade, is also there. As Eros, looking fine, waits for his soon-to-be wife, he notices that his parents have not arrived yet. Thankfully, his mother does show up, giving him a long sigh of relief. Jade, who is adorned in a beautiful gown, gets ready to walk down the aisle, and this is when Patrika Sr. arrives, showing that he does care about his son's happiness. He then walks Jade down the aisle, evoking emotion from Eros, as he didn't expect anything like this from his father. Jade and Eros are then declared husband and wife as they exchange rings. The series ends happily for our loving couple.